It's Umsum time. How does a lie detector test work? Simple. Umsum taught it how to catch a lie. <laughs> oh, Umsum. <laughs> to buy Umsum merchandise, visit umsum.com. <laughs> A polygraph machine consists of multiple sensors whose response is recorded in the form of a graph on a single strip of paper. Hmm. These sensors are attached to the person taking <laughs> the lie detector test. Hmm. These sensors usually record the following. The person's breathing rate, pulse, blood pressure and perspiration, as in sweat. Some polygraphs also record arm and leg movement of the person. Hmm. Now, when the test starts, a number of questions are asked by the examiner to the person. During the test, all the signals coming from the person are recorded on the moving paper. Now, while examining the paper, the examiner can see whether any vital signs change significantly during any of the questions. Generally, a significant change in vital signs indicates that a person may be lying. Hmm. How does an electric bell work? No idea. I did not invent it. Oh, I'm some. An electric bell consists of a bell, an electromagnet, switch, battery, clapper, and a coil. When the switch is closed and electric current passes from the battery to the electromagnet, this leads to the creation of a magnetic field. This magnetic field attracts the iron arm of the clapper. As a result, the metal ball strikes and we hear a sound. Hmm. Now, this movement of the arm also leads to the opening of electrical contacts. This interrupts the current to the electromagnet and causes collapse of the magnetic field, causing the clapper to move away from the bell. Now, this movement of the arm leads to the closing of the electrical contacts again. Thus, the cycle starts repeating itself. As it repeats rapidly, we hear <laughs> continuous ringing. This is how an electric bell works. Hmm. How does an electric fuse work? It doesn't work. It is kept there just for fun. <laughs> oh, I'm some. An electric fuse is a safety device. It helps avoid short circuits and thus helps in protecting the electrical appliances from getting damaged. Hmm. A fuse consists of a metal strip or a wire fuse element. When current starts flowing through the fuse element, heat is generated due to resistance of the fuse element. The fuse element is constructed in such a fashion that when normal current flows or a small current spike occurs, it does not cause the fuse element to attain a high temperature. But when the current load is too high, the fuse element rises to a high temperature and melts, thus breaking the circuit and in turn saving the electrical appliance from damage. Hmm. How does a 3D uh -huh. printer work? Simple. Mix 3 and D, and you get a 3D printer. Oh, I'm <laughs> some. A 3D printer uses a method called fused deposition modeling. In this method, a 3D model is printed from the bottom up, one layer at a time, by repeatedly printing over the same area. Hmm. First, a 3D CAD drawing is fed to the printer. The 3D printer divides the 3D drawing into two-dimensional, cross-sectional layers. These layers are basically like separate 2D prints which sit on the top of one another. The only difference is that there is no paper in between. Now, if we were to use ink to print them, it would not be possible to get the volume necessary to build a 3D model. Hence, instead of ink, the 3D printer may use molten plastic. The molten plastic is fused together using an adhesive or ultraviolet light. Hmm. How does a light bulb glow? Simple. It glows because of Umsum's brightness. Oh, <laughs> Umsum. A light bulb glows because of the principle of conversion of energy, which states that energy is converted from one form to another. In this case, electrical energy is converted to heat plus light. Let us see how this happens. When we switch on the bulb, electricity starts flowing. This electricity, or the flow of electrons, is hindered by the filament of the bulb. The filament is usually made of tungsten, as it has a high melting point. A long and thin filament wire offers higher resistance to the flow of electrons. Hmm. 
Now this hindrance to the flow of electrons leads to the creation of friction, which causes the filament to heat up and start glowing. So this is how a light bulb glows. Hmm. How does an airplane fly? Simple. Umsum makes everything fly. <laughs> oh, umsum. <laughs> Simply stated, there are four forces which are acting on an airplane. Lift. This force is generated because of the forward motion of the airplane through the air. Drag. This force is generated because of the resistance of the air to the forward motion of the airplane. Weight. This force is generated because of the pull of gravity towards the center of the Earth. And finally, thrust. This force is generated by the engines of the airplane. Now, when the force of thrust produced by the engines is greater than the force of drag produced due to air resistance, the airplane moves forward. Also, when the force of lift produced due to forward motion is greater than the force of weight produced due to gravity, the airplane moves upward. In simple terms, this is how an airplane flies. Hmm. How does huh? a pulse oximeter work? Shh, it is a secret. Oh, I'm um, some. <laughs> pulse oximetry is a test carried out using a pulse oximeter. This test is used to measure the oxygen level in our blood. Hmm. Hemoglobin is a protein present in our red blood cells. It transports oxygen from lungs to cells in our body. Pulse oximetry is based on the principle that oxygenated hemoglobin and deoxygenated hemoglobin differentially absorb red and infrared light. Hmm. Oxygenated hemoglobin absorbs greater amounts of infrared light and lower amounts of red light as compared to deoxygenated hemoglobin. Hmm. Now, a pulse oximeter has LEDs which emit red as well as infrared light. These lights pass through our finger and are detected by a photodiode on the opposite end. Finally, by measuring changes in the light absorption, a pulse oximeter is able to give us the oxygen level in our blood. Hmm. How does an air conditioner work? Simple. I blink and it starts working. Oh, I'm um, some. <laughs> An air conditioner has three main parts. Firstly, evaporator, which is located inside the house. Hmm. Finally, compressor and a condenser, which are usually located outside. Hmm. When hot air from the room flows over the cold, low-pressure evaporator coils, the liquid refrigerant, which is present inside the coils, absorbs this heat and starts getting converted to gaseous state. Now, this gaseous refrigerant passes through the compressor which puts it under high pressure and converts it back to liquid state. The extra heat which is generated during this process is let out using the condenser coils and an outdoor fan. This cycle keeps on repeating itself. This is how an air conditioner works and our <laughs> rooms remain cool. Hmm. How does water get inside a coconut? Simple. I put it inside using magic. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Firstly, roots of the coconut plant absorb water from the soil by a process called osmosis. This water is then transported to different parts of the coconut plant. Some of it reaches the coconut. The liquid, which eventually reaches the coconut, is referred to as the endosperm. This endosperm acts as the food or nourishment for the coconut's growth. Now, a part of the endosperm gets converted into a creamy tissue and gets deposited on the coconut's inner surface. Over a period of time, this creamy tissue turns hard and the remaining endosperm ends up as coconut water. So this is how water ends up inside a coconut. How does a fan give huh? us cool air? Cause it has a refrigerator inside it. Ah, you are just <laughs> unbelievable. First of all, a fan does not give cool air. Huh? Our body loses heat mainly in two ways. Hmm. Firstly, our body heat gets transferred oh. to the surrounding air through a process of convection. Secondly, the sweat produced on our skin absorbs our body heat and evaporates into air, thus allowing us to lose heat. Ah. Now, without a fan, both of these above ways create a stagnant layer of hot humid air around our skin thus making it difficult to continue the processes of convection huh? and evaporation. 
However, when we switch on the fan, it blows away the stagnant layer of hot air and replaces it with a relatively drier air, allowing the processes to continue and thus, we lose more heat and cool down faster. Ah.